Okay, today we are going to discuss uh, two things uh, that we did in class the other day. And I want to make sure everyone understands how to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to delete all of this stuff real quick. We're going to be doing a threaded section. And we're also going to show you how you can make these little screws. And then also how you can print an object that has multiple, sorry, that has moving parts, uh, but will print as one piece. So the first thing let's go through is, let's go through this, this cylinder. That cylinder, the screwable part. If you go over here to uh, shape generators and go to all, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, and let's see if this loads a little faster here. It's loading a little slow. Which I should show you where your favorite section is too once we get this. Here it's starting to load. If you scroll down a little bit, there should be one that has, I always forget what they call it here. There we go, this isometric thread. I'm gonna favorite it too, so if you click on the little star, you'll have it. So once I click on this, I'm just gonna drag this out here. Okay. And this is where dragging a ruler out here is very helpful. Okay. And once you drag your ruler out here, it'll give you the dimensions. So if I look at this, I know that this is roughly 12 by 12. So if I go over here and go to basic shapes, what I can do is I'm going to first of all drag this little cylinder out here. And I know, <clears throat> sorry, that this is 12 by 12. I'm going to just duplicate this. So Command C and then paste it. So I've got Command V. Whoa. Need to move this here first. Okay, so I've got two of these. These are identical. They're 12 by 12. And over here, this is 20 by 20. So I'm going to move this to uh, 13, and I'm also going to move this to 13. And the reason I'm doing that is this is just slightly larger than this. All right. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to turn this into a hole. All right. And in a second, I think you'll see what we're going to do here. So I've got this, this is going to be a hole. I've got this, that's 13 by 13. And then what I'm going to do also, I'm going to move this up one. So I'm just going to move this off the ground one. Now it's just sitting up a little higher. And now when I highlight both of these, if I go over here to align, I can now align it, which I want to align here. And I also want to align it here. And what you're going to see is now, even though the bottom part is going to be whole, so you're not going to see it. It's going to leave this little groove structure on the inside of this. And then I know it's going to be the same dimensions because this is going to be that missing part that would easily slide into this. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight both of those and I'm going to group it. And now when I move this over upside down, you're going to see I have this nice little groove pattern that's going to be on the inside. All right, now to make this easier for me, what I would do is I would just get a box like this and we're going to get a very, very simple little structure like this. And I'm going to uh, move this. So we'll just do this 13 by 13 as well. I zoom back out 13 by 13. Okay, and then I can kind of do the same thing. I like these two. And I'm going to align these two as well. Okay. And then if I highlighted these two and actually grouped that, now I would actually have this little screw structure that would easily slide into this. Okay. And I could print both of these objects. They would slide in and you would have the connection that you would want. All right. So that's the first part. That is how we do this little screw structure. The other part is, well, what about if I wanted to print like a simple object that spins, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do this a little differently. Okay, so I'm going to kind of rotate this over right off the bat. I'm going to move this to 90 degrees here. And I'm going to, instead of 20 by 20, I'll do 13 and I'll do 13. Okay, so I've got this, oops, also do 13 here. Okay, so I've got this nice little structure, and this one honestly could have been longer than 13. So I'm going to make this 
uh, make this 20 just for for the fun of it. Let's make it 25 because I think the other one is 20. All right. So now I've got this little object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one as well. Okay. And what I'm going to do first is the first thing I want, if I put this in the middle of here, and if I'm in a second, I'll raise this up. And I'm, if I turn this into a hole, I now know that I have a hole that is the same dimension as this. The problem is if I want this thing to slide easily or spin easily on the inside of it, then I would know that this is going to be too tight. Right? So what I have to do here is if that's 13 by 13, what I need to do here is I'm going to move this to 11. And I will also move this to 11. And I know that this should fit perfectly on the inside of this. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to align this. I'm just going to align it in the center here and also in the center right there. Okay. And then I'm going to group that together. Okay. So there is my little hole. And what I'm going to do with this, move that right where that hole was going to be a second ago. And look at this from the side. Need to raise this up a little bit more. And I can try to align it. Let's see if I can actually align it. Sometimes with that hole in the middle, it gets a little goofy. But I think that's going to look perfectly. Now, if you look, I can see behind it on every angle, which is what I want it to do. All right now, the key thing is I don't want to group this to this little object here. Now, I can tell right here. I do need to move this a little more like that so that fits. Okay, so now I've got this little extension that sticks out on each side. All right now, I'm going to just make this really easy and just put this little sphere right there. And I'm going to again kind of shrink this. Let's make this like a 14. We'll make this a 14 as well. And I have one more dimension over here. There we go. My height is going to be 14 as well. Okay, so now I have this little sphere. And I'm going to duplicate that as well. So I'll put this over here on this side. And then what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to raise this up. Okay, and it's important to, ooh, I just move that around. Let's move this up a little bit more. It's important that I make sure that this is not going to attach too far. And this, if I wanted to spend more time on this, I would. Okay, and I will raise this up. Okay, and then from there, all you need to do is you click on this little object you have in the middle, hold down shift, hold on these little objects right here. And then once you have that, you can group that little section. And you'll see that all three of those and it didn't quite line up right, but again, if I spent more time on this, I could get all those those three to align. Uh, but even the way this is set up, that would still spin. Uh, these little objects would kind of rotate a little stranger, uh, most likely. Uh, but again, that would work, all right? So that would be an object that if I printed it, it would be separate just like that, and it would spin, even though the spinning might look a little strange on it as well. All right, but that's the basics. Yeah, so we've talked about an uh, object that will screw in and also an object that will spin freely. One last thing to discuss on this too. You'll kind of see that I've got a little bit of a gap between where this ball is and the side of the cube. Same thing over here. If I was to print this, it might actually do... Let me uh, go over here real quick so you can kind of see what I'm trying to say. You might have an object that clicks back and forth. All right. So as opposed to, do I have one up here? I thought I had one up there. Um, here we go. An object that looks like this. Okay. So this one, I'm going to kind of hold this up here. You can kind of see there is a part that kind of spins, has a little bevel in there. And when I spin it, it spins freely. But also if I go back and forth, it doesn't make too much of a click clack noise. Okay. Some of the objects that we printed last year had a pretty big gap. So when you would swing it back and forth, the whole object in this middle would go back and forth. If that's what you don't want to do, then of course what you would need to do is actually shorten this little gap. 
So I think what we've been kind of doing, we've been finding like if you do like a two millimeter difference or so, that usually will print pretty well. You can even uh, approximately make it like a three, milli three to four millimeter gap too. Uh, just if you cut it down and get it to print, uh, with this smaller gap, obviously it's not going to be as bad with those those little noises. Okay, so again, we've got the little screw feature here, and we've also gone through uh, an object that spins around.